Man, we've covered a lot of overpowered video game characters. That's a fact. We've done Kratos from God of War, Ashura from Ashura's Wrath, Starkiller from The Force Unleashed, but there is one very important overpowered dude we gotta cover. This man has been running around the Street Fighter world handing out L's like it's his day job. He's probably the first character in fighting game history to get called broken. And for good reason too. You know the shit you have to go through to unlock this character? Oh, you have a Street Fighter 4 flashbacks? Yo, how the hell did they expect me to get a perfect on broken ass Seth? That shit took me three days. I mean, in all- Three days! You good? Yeah, sorry, I just, that, that was a dark time. Yeah, yeah, it was. Anyways, thanks to you guys, the fam. The subject of today's lecture is the master of the Satsu we know Hado, Akuma. Play that intro, son. So fair warning before we start, there are a lot of material within the Street Fighter canon the Udon comics, movies, anime, the works. And unfortunately, a lot of these are non-canon or are kind of canon because they're based off the video game, but they just make the whole lore even more confusing. So to make the story as cohesive as possible, we'll be sticking with the video game lore. Aye, so boom. Before Akuma became, well, Akuma, he was just a simple student of the hands. He trained with his brother Goken under the martial arts master Gotetsu. Within his martial art, Gotetsu used something known as the Satsui no Hado, the surge of murderous intent. It's basically the dark side of the force, but instead of the force, we're talking ki. So coming to the Satsui no Hado can force someone to lose all humanity in exchange for raw power. Luckily, Gotetsu found a way to tap into the power without completely giving into it. As the two pupils grew, Goken grew distasteful of the dark power. So he left both Gotetsu and his brother to form a dojo that would teach a former martial art that didn't rely on edgelord power-ups. Akuma, on the other hand, saw this power and was like, yeah, I need that, and continued training under Gotetsu. As he got stronger, he slowly realized that Gotetsu's old ass is washed up. He can't teach him anything useful anymore. So he leaves his master and secludes himself on an island to truly tap into the Satsui no Hado. In the process, he gets into the dark force and lets go of any grip he has left on humanity. The Akuma of the past becomes a distant memory. He leaves that island as a power crazed fighter looking for the best warrior to catch his Satsui no Fade. His search for the strongest warrior begins with Gotetsu. He challenges his old master to a fight to the death because when you really about the smoke, that's what you do. The master happily accepts the challenge and Akuma proceeds to kill the guy with the Shin Goku Satsu. This wild ass technique literally means instant hell murder. The user performs a series of deadly blows that are somehow able to use the victim's sins against them to crush their soul. What kind of broken ass bullshit? That's what I'm saying, bro. So Gotetsu dies happy knowing that his students surpassed him and Akuma takes his old master's sensei beads, deeming himself the master of the Satsui no Hado. Gokan returns to find the corpse of his master along with his brother who has gone batshit crazy with evil energy. He then basically tells him that he's wildin' right now and he needs to chill the hell out. But Akuma doesn't care about his brother's opinions, so he just dips. Years later, Akuma challenges his older brother at his dojo in front of his students Ryu and Ken. Luckily, Goken wins the duel, but when he refuses to kill his little brother, Akuma runs off calling Goken weak. Then Akuma returns for his rematch. He runs up on Goken and kills him using the Shin Goku Satsu. But Goken somehow survived this by emptying his soul. I look. We all know this makes no sense, but hey, at least it brought us Goken in Street Fighter 4. It's still dumb, don't you? Yeah, I know. So Ken shows up right after the instant hell murder and tries to fight Akuma to avenge his master. Don't know why you'd openly walk to death like that, but okay. Akuma easily beats the fire kicking pupil and leaves. With his brother dead, he embarks on a worldwide journey for the smoke. His quest brings him to the old master again. They duel and somehow Gen survives a raging demon by emptying his soul too. Bruh, please don't make this a thing. But then Gen starts dying mid-match, so he tells Akuma to finish him off. However, he doesn't find any pleasure in fighting old ass people who are not on his level, so he spares the old man and dips. At this point, Ryu has become a seasoned warrior who can challenge the big boys. So Akuma makes it his mission to find the boy, so he can teach him the ways of the Satsui no Hado. Akuma believes that if Ryu uses the Satsui no Hado, then he'll be a worthy opponent. And Ryu wouldn't mind finding this dude either, since he did kill a sensei. Kinda. So eventually Ryu finds Akuma on some island and challenges him. Akuma plays around with him for a bit, then he cuts the playtime short to tell the kid that he ain't ready for the smoke yet. If he truly wants to see Akuma with the hands on equal footing, then he must have come to the dark side. Then to flex them Satsui no Hado muscles, he destroys the island they're on with one strike. And Ryu's just there like, someone needs to nerf this man. Akuma then goes off at his own to begin training for the day that he and Ryu would fight again. Eventually, he ends up killing a random Muay Thai fighter in battle, and this catches the attention of Muay Thai champion Adon. He eventually finds Akuma and challenges him, but Akuma whoops at ass and spares him, thinking that he is not worthy of death by his hand. Well, damn, bro, I didn't want you to kill me anyways. He resumes his training until the Second World Warrior Tournament, 
During the second World Warrior Tournament, Akuma doesn't enter, but he jumps in at the last minute to kill Shadaloo, leader and boss of the tournament, M. Bison. This man doesn't know how to stay dead, so he comes back. After this, he fights a person who was supposed to fight M. Bison in the finals. But this person can be anyone in the roster since the only real story in Street Fighter 2 came from the arcade mode. I don't know, Capcom didn't really know what they were doing with plots back then, so there are a lot of things in the Street Fighter lore that were just left unexplained. So for the purpose of making as much sense as possible, let's just say that the tournament finalist is Ryu. But this still leaves us without an official victory for the second World Warrior Tournament. So let's have a little fun with this incomplete story. Who do you think would win in this fight, Ryu or Akuma? Drop your answers in the comment below. As the third World Warrior Tournament nears, Akuma challenges Ryu again. However, this time Ken gets in the way, so Akuma leaves. Then the third World Warrior Tournament begins. This time the boss is an ultimate weapon created by Shadaloo, Set. During the tournament, Akuma senses the Satsui no Hado awakening within Ryu. He sees this as a chance to finally mold Ryu into the dark fighter that he always wanted. So he hunts the hobo down, only to find him being taken care of by the brother that he thought was dead. Goken. The brothers duel again with Ryu as their prize. However, like most battles in the Street Fighter lore, this fight has no decisive winner. What we do know is that both Akuma and Goken survive, and Goken takes Ryu after the battle. Akuma then leaves to continue training, and at some point here, he meets and seemingly befriends a carefree Capoeira fighter by the name of Elena. Now we get to Street Fighter V, a game that Akuma didn't really take part in. However, he does have a short character story that takes place before the main story of the game. Akuma has grown his hair out and is now in another fight with Gen. This time their battle leads to Akuma seemingly killing the guy. But before that, the master tells him that he will never achieve the god status that he desires, since he threw away his humanity. And he also has a vision of Ryu rejecting the Satsui no Hado. So right now Akuma's tight. Around this time, a physical manifestation of the dark energy within Ryu emerges named Kage. This guy wants to prove to Ryu that he needs the Satsui no Hado to be strong. So to prove that, he goes and beats Sagat, Ryu's old rival. Kage's next target is Akuma, but Akuma looks at the thing and calls him a mere silhouette of his former host. Then he causes the being to disappear with one punch. So I'm sure you guys know about Evil Ryu, right? But what you may not know is that Evil Ryu is not even canon. He's a what if version of Ryu that succumbs to the Satsui no Hado. However, this guy Kage seems to be the canon version of Evil Ryu, who somehow left Ryu's body. Doesn't make much sense, but hey, it's Street Fighter. Later, Akuma gets confronted by the soul devouring Nikali. He's looking for strong warriors to fight and eat. So when he finds Akuma, he starts getting the wild munchies. He beats Ludotic after he tries to eat him, then finds Ryu, who's beginning to adopt the Muno Ken. Akuma is pissed about this, so he challenges Ryu to a decisive battle to see which belief is stronger. The battle ends with Akuma standing victorious. With the person he was looking forward to fighting defeated, Akuma wonders if there's anyone out there who can catch the fate he's been trying to throw for years. Ryu doesn't really give him an answer. He's just kind of like, don't worry, bro. My fist will communicate with you on the other side. Um, okay? Akuma smirks at this, then dips leaving the young warrior alive. Years go by, and the fourth World Warrior Tournament begins. Akuma doesn't join as usual, but is still looking for someone worthy of his smoke. A kid by the name of Sean challenges Akuma to a battle thinking that it's Ryu. Oh god, that poor child. Akuma easily takes the kid out and spares his life because he's not worthy. Then he challenges the tournament sponsor, the leader of the Illuminati, Yale. He kills the guy, but unbeknownst to him and pretty much everyone else who fought this guy for the first time, he can resurrect himself. But this doesn't really matter to Akuma since he left before the revival. Then later, Akuma comes across a mysterious warrior named Oro. And in true Akuma fashion, he challenges him to a death match. Oro actually meets his expectations, and the battle ends with no decisive winner. And that is pretty much all we know about Akuma. Yup, I mean he did also enter the Tekken universe for a sec to kill both Heihachi and Kazuya, but he doesn't manage to kill either of them, and I highly doubt this is in the Street Fighter canon. But I'm sure a lot of you Akuma lovers out there are like, what about Shin Akuma and Oni? Well, like Evil Ryu, both Shin Akuma and Oni are what-if characters. Shin Akuma is a form that Akuma can achieve if he almost becomes one with the Satsui no Hado. Oni is pretty much Shin Akuma, but on steroids. This is what happens when Akuma completely succumbs to the Satsui no Hado. This can't be canon, but in Ashura's Wrath, Oni was on par with Ashura in terms of power. And Ashura is so strong that he beat God. And unless you're someone like Ashura, one does not simply beat God. And to be completely real with y'all, canon or not, fighting Ashura to a standstill is still pretty fucking epic. But yes, that is it for Akuma's story. I tried making the most sense out of it, even with all the missing information, so I hope you guys understood it. And since I'm curious, I have another mini death battle question for you guys. Since the whole Ashura versus Oni fight didn't have an actual winner, who do you think would win in that fight? To be honest, I'm leaning towards Asura because my man is strong, strong. But Akuma's fists have no equal, so I'm not too sure. Leave your opinions in the comments below. With that being said, it's green. What's going on fam? Thank you so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History, this time on Akuma. Like I said before, there's a lot of missing information, so I hope you guys understood everything I was talking about. If not, I'm sorry, I tried. That's, that's literally all there is on Akuma. I mean, there are also the comics and the movies, but like, there are some, there are times where like, 
they don't match what's going on with the game and it just doesn't make any sense and the timelines are all weird. It, Street Fighter is very complicated. You guys thought Mortal Kombat was complicated? Street Fighter is just weird. The whole story for Street Fighter is crazy. But regardless of that, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like. It really helps it a lot. Share this video with any Street Fighter fans who just want to know more about Akuma or just Street Fighter fans in general. Comment to us you want to see me cover in future episodes of Modest Gaming History. And if you'd like to see me talk more about gaming, anime, and add some comedy in there, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that you get updated whenever I upload new videos. Shout out to Lloyd Edwards, Young Tax Fraud. <laughs> young Tax Fraud, bro. But shout out to Lloyd Edwards and Young Tax Fraud and all my other dope patrons make videos as possible with their very kind donations. And if you are not already a patron and would like to become one, go to my Patreon page in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month. I keep on saying as little as $1 a month, but it's, there is no such thing as as little because it's just, that's it, it's just $1 a month, so yeah. $1 a month, get all the perks. As you know, the Black Lives Matter link is still in the description below. Donate if you can, if you can't. Keep on sharing the information. Don't forget, Black Lives still matter just because things are cooling down right now. We cannot stop the fight. We gotta keep on going. And lastly, thank you. Thank you, we hit 100K. I'm gonna make an actual video like celebrating the whole thing with Shamar and everything is gonna be lit. But yes, we made 100K, people. We hit that 100K, you know what's next? One million. You're gonna get to one million next and it's gonna be fire. So yeah. 100K, lit, appreciate y'all. It's gonna be fire to keep on making more content with you guys and entertaining you guys with my weird brand of comedy. And yeah, we'll just see where the channel goes from there. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, take care. Black Lives Matter, stay safe. And remember, you can do whatever the fuck you put your mind to. All it takes is practice, patience, and time. I feel like patience and time fall into the same umbrella. Patience and practice. Yeah, and if there's any, if you need any example of that, Five years on YouTube and I'm finally hitting 100K. Just need patience and practice, bro. You got this. All right, peace out, people.